In this video, I'm going to show you how to drain the old coolant in this 2009 Kawasaki KLR650 and replace it with new fresh coolant. First thing you want to do is get the motorcycle in a level upright position um, and do this while the engine is cold. The first thing we want to remove is uh, this lower right fairing cover um, and that's held on by a Phillips screw up here, 8 millimeter bolt here, another 8 millimeter bolt down here, and on the inside of this thing, right up there, there's another 8 millimeter bolt we have to remove. Um, I'm also going to remove the uh, left side lower fairing cover just because it uh, makes it easier to get to the radiator cap to, to add new fluid. Um, both the left and the right uh, lower fairing covers have the, the bolts and the screws in the same positions. So I'm going to remove the screw up here. And the bolt. Make sure there's a little uh, spacer that's underneath this part of the fairing that fits in between this piece and this piece. Uh, I just dropped it on the floor, so make sure uh, you're aware of that when you take this apart, otherwise you can lose it. Also, the screw that fits into this part of the fairing is shorter than the screw that fits at the bottom part. So if you try and put the longer screw into the, the shorter uh, position, it's going to hit the gas tank. So uh, that's something else to be aware of. Now for the bottom bolt. and the bolt on the inside. And now I'm going to repeat this process on the left side and I will be back. With the uh, lower right and left uh, fairing off the bike, uh, it exposes more of your coolant system. Uh, here is your coolant reservoir which is on the right hand side of the bike. Come over here to the left hand side, you've got your radiator. Um, at the top here is your radiator cap. Uh, this is a good time to check your radiator fins, uh, see if it's any clogged up with any debris. You can use a strong stream of running water from your hose to clean, uh, clean out these radiator fins. Um, if you let them get clogged, it can cause heating problems with the bike, so it's good to keep that clean. Uh, it's a good time to check your radiator hoses, uh, check the connections, look for any uh, evidence of coolant leaks, uh, check for any cracks, check for any bulging in the hoses. Um, this upper hose runs to your engine. Um, this lower hose goes to your water pump. Come around to the right side. Um, this is the lower hose, or this is the water pump, or this runs to your block, another hose that runs to the engine, and this, this is the hose that ran from the, the lower part of the radiator, and here is your water pump. Next thing we need to do is remove this skid plate here um, to get to the drain plug on the water pump. It's held on by two bolts. There's one here, there's one on the other side, and there's two at the bottom. Um, it's kind of hard to, not sure I can, there's one right there and one right over there, if you can see that. All the bolts on this uh, skid plate are by uh, 8mm.
And then there's two bolts on the other side and then I'll drop this skid plate out of the way. With the skid plate out of the way we can uh, get to the drain plug which is on the water pump. This is our water pump and this is the drain plug. Uh, we remove this drain plug to drain the uh, old coolant out of the motorcycle. The coolant system only holds 1.64 quarts of coolant so I'm just going to use this uh, oil drain pan to catch the coolant. And I'm going to remove this uh, drain plug. It's only uh, uh, it's an 8 millimeter plug. Um, remove the uh, radiator cap to help this stuff flow out. With the uh, coolant draining, we want to remove this uh, coolant reservoir and um, drain that. I need to remove this black cover. It's held on by two Phillips screws. Now I can remove this uh, reservoir. It's uh, held on by two um, or four eight millimeter bolts. Before I remove this reservoir, um, coolant reservoir, I need to remove this overflow hose. That's just on it, held on by a clamp here. I'm going to kind of lift this out of the way and kind of get under it with a screwdriver and gently push it up till it's off. Now I can remove this reservoir, coolant reservoir. Um, it's held on by four bolts. At the bottom there's a hose attached to this uh, reservoir container. I'm not going to remove that because I'm just going to take this and, and take the lid off and, and dump the contents in the drain pan. I don't, and then I'm going to reinstall it with one bolt. And The reason I'm only going to reinstall it with one bolt is because I need to flush this out with water and, and dump that out and then, then I can reattach it with all four bolts. And then be careful when you remove this last bolt, uh, be sure and hold on to the re uh, reservoir, otherwise it will fall. Now I can take the cap off of this and dump the contents. I'm actually going to leave it off. I'm not going to reinstall it with a one bolt. I've got an old um, coolant container that I, I rinsed out and filled it with fresh water. I'm going to fill this uh, reservoir up with water and rinse it out and flush it again. Pour it into the, the drain pan. To, just to help clean it out. Now I can uh, reinstall the reservoir. Now I've got the reservoir reattached. I put the four bolts back in, reattached the overflow uh, tube, and now I'm ready to add new fluent to this the reservoir. But before I do that, I want to flush out the radiator with some with some fresh water. 
Okay, I've got a funnel here attached to my radiator here, and I'm going to run some fresh water through this through this radiator and try and flush it out. Um, hopefully, I can do this while holding the camera. I'm going to fill that up. and let that run through and, and run into the drain pan. And you can see it there running into the, the drain pan. One thing I should mention, um, this is the old coolant and water that I uh, flushed through the system. Uh, you wanna be really careful with this stuff because um, it's poisonous um, and it has a sweet taste and animals are attracted to it. So if you've got dogs or cats or any wild animals, um, around your area just be aware that uh, you shouldn't leave this stuff laying out because um, animals will drink it and it can kill them because uh, it is poisonous. Kawasaki recommends replacing the coolant in the 2009 uh, Kawasaki KLR 650 um, every 24,000 miles or every three years uh, whichever comes first. They recommend using an ethylene glycol based coolant with uh, anti-corrosion inhibitors uh, for aluminum engines. So it's important that uh, whatever coolant you decide you, to use, you, you make sure that it's, it's an ethylene glycol based coolant and it's okay for aluminum engines. Um, they recommend uh, mixing it with water at a 50-50 uh, ratio. Um, so you'd have half water and half coolant. Uh, you can buy it pre-mixed like I, I'm showing here. This is what I'm going to be using. It's already pre-mixed. It's already 50% water, 50% coolant or antifreeze. Um, the reason I buy the pre-mixed is, is it's a lot easier. I don't have to hassle with mixing it. and um, they use a, a distilled or um, demineralized water, so I don't have to worry about uh, you know having to purchase distilled water. Um, but yeah, this is the coolant I'm going to be using. Um, you can get this you can get this in a regular type coolant, which has been around for years, or you can get extended life. Um, extended life just lasts longer, um, just holds up better over time. Uh, this is what I'm using. I'm using the extended life premixed um, Prestone ethylene glycol based coolant which is good for aluminum engines. With the coolant drain and the uh, coolant system flushed with clean water um, I'm going to reinstall the drain plug. Um, I've, I've attached a new washer seal to it. Uh, Kawasaki re recommends re uh, replacing the, the washer every time you take the drain plug out. Um, I'm going to reinstall this and tighten it to uh, 78 inch pounds. I've got my torque wrench here. And that's on. Okay, now I'm going to add uh, about a quart and a half of coolant to the uh, radiator. And um, I've taken the bike off of the lift because I need to be able to tip the bike from side to side after I fill the, the radiator up just to help purge any air that's, that might be in the system. Um, so I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to measure this out in a measuring container. Hopefully I can do this without spilling it. This should be one quart. And when it fills up, um, it's not full yet. There you go. Now put the cap back on, radiator cap, and 
and tip the bike from side to side. Just to help kind of purge the air out. And then check the level again. And the level's okay. So I'm going to leave it right there um, and consider that full. Okay, with the uh, radiator filled back up to the full mark, um, I forgot to mention that the full mark on the radiator is the top of the uh, bottom of the fill neck, so. Um, now I can fill this reservoir up. Uh, the fill, full mark on this reservoir is right here, um, almost midpoint, just a little bit above mid midpoint. A little hard to see in the camera. I can add my cap and tighten that down. Now that I've got the radiator filled and the uh, coolant reservoir filled, and before I add anything else, like put the covers back on, I'm going to uh, start the bike and let it run for about 30 seconds and then check the level of the radiator and the uh, reservoir again. Now I can uh, check the radiator level, see if that's still full, and no it drops, so I need to add some coolant, more coolant to the radiator. Now that I have the uh, radiator full of coolant and the reservoir full of coolant after running it for 30 seconds, I'm going to take the bike off the lift and rinse off any uh, old or new coolant that I spilled. Um, I'm going to do this before I add any of the plastic pieces, uh, then I'm going to uh, start the bike and let it warm up to operating temperature and check for any leaks um, and make sure that everything stays full um, you know add coolant if I need to then I'll go ahead and reinstall everything um, you just reverse the procedure um, you know I use to remove everything you know the, the right and left side uh, fairings and uh, the skid plate and uh, the plastic cover for the uh, reservoir um, and then uh, for the you know the next couple of rides, just keep an eye on it. Just make sure that this, the coolant stays cool, uh, full, and just uh, keep an eye on your um, temperature gauge. Um, but yeah, this this video is getting kind of long, so I'm gonna I'm gonna end it here. Um, if you have any questions, just just leave a comment, and and I'll do my best to answer it. Hope you found this video helpful, and thank you for watching.